Hello again. I've got another book for you this time. And the book is by a, an author called Edward Ardizzoni. He wrote in the 1950s, so it's quite an old book. But you can still get these books. And um, the title is Tim's Last Voyage. Tim's Last Voyage. So we'll look forward to hearing the story. The illustrations and the story are super. Tim's Last Voyage. A gale was blowing, it was night. Tim, who lived in a house by the sea, could hear the waves crashing on the beach. He could not sleep. He loved the sea and longed to be in some small ship battling with the storm. The next morning, Tim and his friends, Ginger and Charlotte, walked down to the beach. The gale was blowing harder than ever. The waves were enormous and the three of them had lots of fun racing the waves as they rushed the shingle beach. Come on, Ginger, you are silly. Oh, I'm getting wet. Sometimes Ginger was foolish and would nearly get caught. Then they climbed the steep shingle bank to talk to the old boatman. Oh, it's bad, it's bad, said the boatman. See that line of white foam far out to sea? That is where even bigger waves are breaking in the shallow water of the Goodwin Sands. I will bet my bottom dollar there will be some poor ship wrecked on those treacherous sands before the month is out. Oh, poof, said Ginger. I've seen worse storm than this. After leaving the boatman, they walked to the harbour nearby. There, lying beside the quay, was a small steamer with a tall, rusty red funnel. It was called the SS Arabella. What a lovely name, thought Tim, saying Arabella, Arabella, over and over again to himself. Hanging onto the side of the ship was a notice which was written, Wanted, deckhands for short voyage, three days only. Oh, said Tim. How I wish we could get that job, but my father and mother would not like it. But Ginger only answered, Poof, it's holiday time, the job's only for three days, they won't mind. Ought you to do it, Tim? Oh, come on, Tim. Then they all climbed on board and met the mate, who told them that as the ship was due to sail soon, and as no man had applied for the job, he would give it to Tim and Ginger. But he warned them that the work was hard and that the bosun was a tartar. Tim told Charlotte to run home and tell his parents that he and Ginger would be away for three days. Then they went below to find the bosun and learn what jobs they had to do. Bye Charlotte. Goodbye Tim. The bosun was indeed a tartar. What? Two little snippets like you? He shouted. I will work your fingers to the bone. See the carpenter? Get piles and scrubbing brushes. And if I catch either of you idling, I will beat him with a rope's end. Ooh, not very nice. Joey Adds, the ship's carpenter, handyman and storesman, looked at them over his spectacles. Well, 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 you are pretty small, aren't you? He said. Here are the brushes, piles and mops. Do the best you can and avoid the bosun. He's a tartar. Tim and Ginger were hard at work scrubbing out the saloon when the Arabella left port. At once she felt the force of the gale and rolled and pitched which made Tim and Ginger's work harder still. The bosun never allowed them to rest, so they were two very tired little boys 
when they handed back their pails and brushes to Joey. Get on with it, or I'll... I'm so tired. You do look tired, said Joey. I can see that the bosun has been a tartar, as usual. Come and dry your eyes, Ginger, and both of you make yourselves as comfortable as possible and rest. After they had rested for a little, Joey asked if either of them could read. When Tim said yes, he gave him a book and said, Read it to me. The book was called Moby Dick. It was about a white whale. I was a whaler once, said Joey. I have seen a white whale. It was a brute. Because it was so rough, the Arabella could not get into a small port, which was its destination. Instead, it steamed south into the gale. These were hard days. For the captain who could not leave the bridge, for the mate who had to see everything was shipshape, for Gino the cook because it was difficult to cook in rough weather, for Joey patching and mending, and for Tim and Ginger because the bosun with his rope's end made them work all day long, not caring if they were cold, wet or tired. On the fourth day out, a terrible thing happened. A great wave dashed over the side and washed the funnel overboard. Water poured into the engine room. The engine stopped and the Arabella rolled like a dead thing in a waste of waters. McAndrew, the engineer, came up from below saying that he could not start the engine, but the game would do his best. The boatswain, when he heard the news, cried out, It's a doomed ship! and shut himself in his cabin with a bottle of rum. You see, he was a coward as well as a bully. Doom! Ginger was frightened and sat huddled in the corner of the ga galley. Gino tried to cheer him up with tidbits of food. For what it seemed many days, the helpless ship was blown to the north by the gale. The captain was worried because as he could not see the sun by day nor the stars by night, he did not know where they were. The mate was worried because there was three foot of water in the hold and still more coming aboard. The engineer was worried because he could not get the engines to start nor the pumps to work. Radio out of action, can't get help. Can you get the pumps going? Nee, I canna. Gino was worried because he could not cook hot food for the crew, and poor Ginger could not be comforted. But Ginger did try hard not to be so frightened and to help Gino cut bread and cheese. The bosun only howled and shouted, It's a doomed ship! and drank more rum. This upset other members of the crew when they heard him. We're all doomed! That chap gives me the willies! All this time, Tim and Joey sat stitching a great sail to go on the foremast and help steady the ship. When Tim's fingers became too sore to go on stitching, he would wedge himself into a corner and read Moby Dick to Joey. This made them both feel happier. At last the sail was finished and with the help of the mate and some of the crew, they ran it up the foremast. The wind filled it, the ship was steadier, and less water came on board. But all the same, the gale drove them northward even faster than before, and the captain was even more worried because he still did not know where they were. On to the north they went until one day there was a grinding crash. The poor Arabella bounced and shuddered to a stop. 
She had run aground and was at the mercy of the breaking waves which dashed over her and carried away her boats and ventilators. The captain was very brave and calm. He called to the crew on deck, Men, he said, this looks like the end of my dear ship Arabella, and it might be the end of us too. In a sea like this, the ship will break up soon. Our boats are gone. Collect all the wood you can and make rafts so you can float ashore. But I do wish I knew where we were. At that moment, there was a rift in the clouds and the sun shone through. Tim saw a distant beach and a house behind it. It was his house. Sir, he shouted to the captain, I can see my house. We must be on the Goodwin Sands. The old boatman is sure to see us and tell the live boatman. Good, but they must hurry, answered the captain, as we are sinking fast. Tim was right. The old boatman had seen them and told the lifeboatman. The lifeboat, a grand a new one with an engine, arrived just in time to save them all before the Arabella sank beneath the boiling foam. Even now, if the weather is fine and the tide is low, and you are standing on Tim's shingle beach looking far out to sea, you will make out two masts sticking up above the shallow waters of those treacherous sands. They are the Arabellas. Once in the lifeboat, the bosun felt safe and became his old bullying self again. He said he would beat the boys with his rope's end if they would not sit still. As for Ginger, when somebody said, you were frightened, weren't you? He answered, Phew. I was very brave helping Gino in the galley. Gino said that Ginger had tried hard not to be frightened and was quite a help, which pleased him a lot. Bravo, Tim. You have saved the cat. Sit still, can't you? Said the bosun. Standing on the beach to watch the arrival of the lifeboatmen were Tim's father and mother and Charlotte. They were very surprised to see Tim and Ginger, as they had no idea that the wrecked ship was the Arabella. They gave them a great welcome. Ginger said it was brave, but the bosun was a terrible coward. Tim's mother said, Promise no more voyages, Tim. When all the hugging and kissing was over, Tim's mother made him promise not to go to sea again until he was grown up. Tim kept his promise. But when he was grown up, he did go to sea and in time became a very fine sailor and the captain of a great ship. However, he always remembered the time when he had been a little boy in a ship, so he was never unkind to his cabin boys and never beat them with a rope's end. Well, that's the end of the story. I hope you enjoyed it and look forward to our next story.